Hi, I'm Peter Downhauer with Community Solutions Initiative. Today I'm going to show you how to build a charge controller, or more specifically the 170 milliamp charge controller, which is the slow charger. So this is a uh, group of the charge controller uh, components. The charge controller is shown right here, and you can see that it's made up of uh, some 18 by 1 wire, red and black. It's actually speaker wire that is pretty pliable and it's very useful for this. You've got the voltage regulator, the 1117. Um, you've got a 6.8 ohm uh, resistor, which is rated at 5 watts. You've got the female amp maiden lock connector, the, the pins that go in that, and two alligator clips. And that's most of the materials that make up the charge controller. It's pretty simple. First thing we need to do is to attach the voltage regulator to the resistor and we're going to use JB Weld uh, 4 minute quick dry uh, epoxy for that. We take equal parts of uh, each of the tubes. We just need a really small batch and we mix those together and then once you mix them together you have about 4 minutes to put everything uh, on that you want to attach together before it dries. We're going to want to set the voltage regulator into the, uh, the channel side of the resistor and have the terminals overhang uh, the, the terminals of the resistor. Uh, you can see on one side of the resistor you have the channel, on the other side there's writing which uh, tells you what resistor it is exactly. So I've got the two parts of uh, JB Weld, I'll mix it up together and I'll put a, uh, a liberal dollop of it on the, in the channel. Okay, that should be enough. Then I'll place the voltage regulator into the channel nice and snugly and press it down. And then I'll let it sit for four minutes. Now we're going to attach the uh, resistor and voltage regulator to the amp main lock connector. Now we want to connect the, we want to attach the side that has the writing on the resistor the flat side of the amp maiden lock connector. The flat side is the side that doesn't have the little ridge, so you can main, you know you can know where the uh, the negative terminal is going to be. So I made another little batch of amp maiden, or I should say the uh, JB Weld epoxy. I'll take a uh, a good sized dollop, put it on the connector, and then I'll place the resistor on top of that. And I'll try and make sure that everything is uh, uh, lined up correctly so that you're not skewed in any way. And the edge of the uh, connector is in line with the, the voltage regulator and the, the uh, resistor. And I'll let that sit for four minutes. Now while we're waiting for the, uh, the JB Weld to dry, I'm going to go ahead and make a, a little jumper cable. I need about a one and a half to two inch uh, uh, strand of... Uh, wire and this is 18 gauge stranded wire um, and what I want to do is on one side uh, strip off about uh, I would say a quarter of an inch and on the other side um, we're going to put a, uh, a pin so we only need about an eighth of an inch there we go now I'll put the pin uh, immediately on it. It's a male uh, pin that goes into the female connector. And I'll just crimp this on there. I may need to get it started here. There we go. Take the crimper. Get it in there. There we go. Now we've got our little jumper cable, and we'll I'll, I'll show you where we, this goes uh, on the next step. So now that everything has dried, the uh, JB Weld has dried. We're going to prepare the terminals for soldering. You can see this one I've already prepared. Uh, the goal here is to bend the the center uh, voltage regulator terminal to connect with the right hand side uh, resistor terminal and the two left hand side terminals together. So I'll take one that I haven't messed with and I'll show you how that's done. 
Now here you can see the terminal sticking out towards the camera. Uh, what we're going to want to do is to uh, bend the voltage regulator terminal uh, into the, the little tiny channel that uh, is above the resistor terminal. I don't know if you can see it there. So let's start out by moving the uh, voltage regulator terminals to the side so we have a little extra room. I'll take each one to the side and move it off. There we go. I'm using my, uh, my fine tip uh, needle nose pliers. Now right at the edge of the, the resistor I'll bend the uh, voltage regulator terminal down into that channel. So I'll take about that much, get, a, get about a 90, and then try and set it into that channel right above the, the resistor uh, terminal. There we go. Got it. I'll do the same with the other one. The, right, the left hand side uh, terminal, the voltage regulator. Put it in that channel. And now I want to bend the, the resistor terminals up over the voltage regulator terminals. Like so. I can just push those over. Good. We want to make sure there's a good connection between those two terminal ends. We will be soldering those together. And then uh, at the very end you can kind of center up the uh, the middle terminal again. Try not to put too much pressure on those. What we want to make sure is that the terminals aren't going to be touching each other um, when we're finished or else uh, nothing will work. Alright, so while we're soldering, what we want to solder, solder together are the, the two terminals that are touching right now and uh, the jumper wire which has the quarter inch uh, stripped wire at the end is going to go onto this third terminal. Um, what we're using is a 25 watt uh, soldering iron and uh, some rosin core so solder that's uh, lead free. So let's go ahead and solder these together. I'll take the, uh, the solder, put a little bit on the iron itself, and then when I place the heat onto the uh, connection I can actually push uh, more solder onto it. And uh, I'll just do that and make sure the connection is uh, covered in solder. And do it with the other connection and just want to make sure that we're not putting in um, too much heat try and remove the heat as soon as possible. The final solder uh, what we need to do is actually place the uh, the jumper cable uh, open wire onto the terminal itself and the approach that I take is basically to um, push that terminal right into the uh, stranded wires and that gives us uh, enough of a connection that we can add some solder. On this one we may need to add a little more solder just because we've got a lot of wires and sometimes it's a bit tipsy. There we are. Try that again. There we go. Plenty of solder on that one. There we are. We've got three uh, three solders. Alright, now that we've got the terminals uh, soldered together, we're going to cut off about a 14 inch uh, strand of this 18 by 2 speaker wire. It's nice to use this wire because it's uh, pretty pliable, allows you to uh, connect up very easily to our uh, charge sticks, as well as the fact that it's already red and black, which is nice to keep track of what's positive and negative. So you can actually just split this stuff directly, and that's the next step. Uh, if you have a different type of wire, you may need to use a utility knife to get that started. But once you've got it split, we need to um, strip the ends of the wires. So we'll take our wire stripper, and with the black wire, we want about a quarter of an inch stripped off. And we're going to take those strands and actually bend them over themselves in order to uh, give the, the pin that we attach it to a bit more... Uh, uh, material to hold on to. So we'll just bend it over itself with our needle nose pliers. There we go. Effectively doubling the uh, the gauge or having the gauge. And then we're going to put it in our pin. This is a male pin as well. And get it started before we put it in the crimper. There we go. And crimp that on.
there we are, our negative wire is ready to go. Our positive wire will want to strip off also about a quarter of an inch. And we're going to take this back to the soldering station and actually solder it onto uh, one of the other connections. Now the positive wire needs to be soldered onto the left hand side uh, soldered connection that you already put together. Uh, there's a number of different ways that you can uh, hold this together so that you can make that solder. If you've got a pair of helping hands that helps. Otherwise you can do what I do and just place it on there um, so that it's uh, pretty closely uh, touching the, uh, it's, it's, so it's touching the uh, terminals uh, pretty well. And then use the uh, soldering iron to do the rest of the work. So I'll take our soldering iron and apply a liberal amount of solder to it. There we are. And since the uh, distances between these terminals is pretty short, you still need to be careful that you're not soldering uh, the terminals that shouldn't be soldered together. We want to put the pins into the amp main lock connector terminals. Uh, but first we want to make sure that all our uh, uh, voltage regulator and resistor terminals and solder connections are adequ adequately spaced apart. So I'll use my needle nose pliers to just uh, push everything kind of to its side if it's uh, overlapping so that there's a little gap between each one of those. Um, and now's the time if, if you have any terminals that are kind of sticking out to use your end clip end cutters and just uh, snip off those terminals. I don't I don't have any right now. That's pretty clean. So, okay. Now that we've uh, we've done that, let's actually put those pins into the terminals. And this takes a little doing. You want to go all the way till you hear the click. Now this one you got to be careful. You can see here that I didn't pay attention and I bent that terminal. You you want to avoid bending it too much or else it'll snap off but uh, I can bend it back into place for the time being and it should be fine for now. Now I'll take the black negative wire and put it into the negative terminal of the connector. You can see that corresponds with that ridge on the, along the bottom side of the uh, connector. And I'll push it in there until I hear a click. There we are. Now we've got our connections and the next step is to add some JB Weld over all these terminals so that they stay distanced apart. Now with the terminal spaced apart, I'll add my JB Weld, another liberal dollop. I want to put it right over the terminals and uh, it'll kind of sink in over the next four to six minutes as it dries. There we go. Let's let it dry. Now while I'm waiting for the JB Weld to dry, you can see that I've heated up a second soldering iron. And this is a cheaper soldering iron that we can use for burning holes in plastic caps. This is our half inch black plastic cap. And we're going to burn a hole in the back end so that wires can go through that. And this plastic cap is going to form the uh, protective cover over the charge components. So I'll just push that in there, let it burn through, kind of Create a little pass so that two of those 18 by 2 wires can get through there. There it goes. Make sure that you're in a well ventilated area so that you're not breathing in the plastic fumes. Alright, now that I've got that burnt through, I'll let that dry and then I'll come back with a razor and kind of trim off that, uh, that excess plastic. Now I'll take the single edge razor and just cut off the excess uh, plastic that was melted. Just be careful not to cut myself. Really only need to do this on the outside. There we go. Now that we've got that JB Weld dry it over the terminals. We're going to uh, bend the positive wire uh, so you've got something that looks right about that like that and we're going to put a zip tie that goes over all three of those wires so it'll just hold them together. So here's a small zip tie. Put that 
right over there. Just tighten it up by hand is fine. Clip off the excess. There we are. The next step is to take about a 12 inches of black electrical tape. Uh, depending on the thickness of this tape, this one happens to be very thin. If you have a thicker electrical tape, that's probably better and you should use less. But the idea of it is to stretch this over the center of the charge controller so that you can build that up so that when we put the black, black plastic cap over it, it'll uh, fit on there nice and snugly. So I'll just stretch this around right over the voltage regulator body. There we are. You don't need to put too much pressure on it, but you should stretch it over. Okay, now we've built that up and we're going to put the black plastic cap over the end wires. So the way we do that is put the end wires together and we're going to find the hole, push them right through, bring them all the way down to the end, over the wires and the terminals, over the body, right up to the end of the charge controller. There we go. There we go. And that should be nice and snug right around the, the top of where the voltage regulator was. We've got a few more zip ties to add uh, now that the black plastic cap is over everything. We'll take a medium zip tie, put it over the where the body of the voltage regulator is, which is not exactly at the end. So right about there. Um, tighten that up and cut off the excess. Being careful not to uh, pull on the, the terminals which are all on the back end of that black plastic cap. And we'll take a micro zip tie and, and just put another one uh, over those two wires. So, so that if you're pulling on the wires you're not pulling on the connections. Give it a little bit of support there. We are tighten that one up by hand and clip off the excess. Now we're going to attach the alligator clips to the red and black wire. First thing we want to do is strip the wire. And we need about a half inch on each on each wire. More is okay. And like before you can actually strip off more and bend it over itself. Uh, I think it works just fine like this, so I don't do that. Uh, we'll take the alligator clips. These are crimp on alligator clips. They're micro sized. You just put the, the insulator over the wire first. There we go. And then we use the same uh, crimp die spot as uh, we use on the hand maiden lock pins. And just right on the end there will do. Do that for both sides, both clips. Okay, if you're worried about it uh, coming off, just give it a tug. If it doesn't come off, you should be should be good. And then push the insulator back up over the brass. And just a few final steps. We need to put a, a number right here with the corresponding size of the uh, charge controller. So just take my pen. This one is a 170 milliamp charger, so I'll write 170 right there. And finally, we need to take a look at the pins that they are in fact centered, and we'll uh, work with our connector uh, with our hubs. So I'll just push this to the center. Here we go. Just a little bit of pressure. And we can do a test on it uh, to make sure that those connect. But we've completed a 170 milliamp charge controller. Thanks for watching.